Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We ask the God that you establish us in you. Thank you, Father, that the realm of the invisible is mightier than the realm of the visible. Because your word in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3 tells us, The things which are seen are not made of things which are visible, implying that they are made of things which are invisible. Yet, humans continue to live based on the laws of physics and the laws of the visibility within them. We know, Father God, that the Apostle Paul and all those in your Bible who have followed you and walked after you have been people who have seen the invisible. They live by their faith in the invisible and the revelations that God brought forth from the invisible. For the future is in an invisible dimension. What we see of the present and of the past are things that we see and work out from the invisible realm. And we ask Lord God that even as we raise ourselves to the dimension of the Spirit and understand the flow of your Spirit in these end times, they continue to establish us in you and continue to build us upon your word. Let your word be true and let all of your angels be strengthened in our midst. Strengthen each one and strengthen the angels in our midst and strengthen, O oh God, the hearts of your people as they continue to walk strong in you from glory to glory, grace to grace. We pray, Father, that your word will strengthen each one, that each one will discover the perfect will of God specifically in their lives, and as they discover it, may they each be strengthened to walk the walk of God. We bless you and praise you, Father, for all your mercies and your goodness, and we just bring ourselves to you in surrender, in worship, Thank you for the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and understanding as we look and peer into the dimension of the spirit to understand the four living creatures that we might work and merge with them. We give you glory, praise, and worship, Father. All glory be to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, for there is no other but Him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. We bless you, we thank you, Father, and receive all the glory and worship from the depths of our heart. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Bring it up to speed to where we are. Uh, the last week, we study the Hebrew and the Greek words, especially in more the Hebrew words, on uh, some references to the four living creatures. Right? Remember that. The uh, passages that we took from are uh, from the book of uh, Ezekiel, chapter 1 and chapter 10. And uh, we also took from Revelation chapter 4 and 5. And um, then we study the Hebrew words uh, uh, like cherubim and seraphim. And uh, we realized that when I asked you all the question uh, offhand whether you believe that they are the same occurrence, and uh, each of you agree that. Uh, they're more or less uh, re referencing the same creatures, but by their experience. See, when we read the Bible, we forgot one thing. We forgot that um, the Bible is separated for hundreds of years. The people who wrote the Bible sometimes don't see each other, they don't know each other. Uh, and each one in their age and generation describe things according to their vocabulary. And, um, that was mine in uh, Ezekiel. Let me point this out. Uh, touch that. And it should appear there. Yes. I've highlighted how that when Ezekiel saw the living creatures, last week we deal with a number of wings. Ezekiel he saw uh, two pairs of wings, which is four. And um, then Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6 saw six wings and uh, John the Apostle in Revelation chapter 4 and 5 saw six wings and then we asked whether they are the same creatures and all of you agree all of you here agree and many of those online I'm sure also agree that they are the same living creatures now between last week to this week has any one of you changed your mind yet? <laughs> you still believe they are the same living creatures? yeah good alright and uh, so we realize separated by millions, uh, uh, thousands of years, uh, some of them, and some hundreds of years, they describe according to the vocabulary and they describe what they saw. Uh, and uh, 
Like for example, there are books out there that uh, people tell of their accounts, maybe of appearances of angels. And then some of them saw angels without wings. So they conclude, therefore angels have no wings. Say, wait, wait, wait. That is your conclusion from your subjective experience. So if somebody else saw angels with wings, they might conclude all angels have wings. Can you see how each one is trying to describe what they, what they saw? And although we, we sort of like the phrase and title cherubim, seraphim, we, we sort of begin to give honor to the words that the actual being. So like if some of you will say, well, my angel is actually a cherubim. Then another guy said, my angel is actually a seraphim. Whoa! They are just words. Words that have been used to the angels and then we give them some sort of dimension of respect. So a cherub actually just simply means uh, a creature that has a cherubic face which in the Hebrew points to an ox-like face. Seraph from the Hebrew word uh, means a creature that looks like a burning thing. But through the years, because people refer to them, we begin to uh, honor the words and forgot that words are just descriptions in human vocabulary, in their experiences. So we show that uh, in Ezekiel chapter uh, 10, the four living creatures, the word cherubim is used. Of course, you all know the English thing, one cherub, many cherubim. So, uh, they use the word cherubim. Then, for the first time in Isaiah, when the word seraph comes in, or seraphim, um, I point to Isaiah chapter 6. And uh, <clears throat> then notice here, seraphim. Seraphim. And I prove from the scriptures that cherubim, seraphim are the same. It's just humans who describe them with different vocabulary. Uh, and it's just a language. Of course, they spoke the same, uh, we assume the same language. Uh, just like, do you know that Jesus' name sounds different in different language? The original enunciation of Jesus' name is actually Yeshua. You will hear the Aramaic enunciation, Yeshua, Yeshua. That sounds very far from Jesus, don't you think so? You might be referring to another man. And the, uh, there's one place in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, where they were wondering to translate it as Jesus or Yeshua, because uh, it was referring to Joshua. But then he's talking about Jesus, uh, a Joshua and a Jesus kind of thing. But the Greek actually spells it Jesus. Because the name Yeshua in the Greek is Jesus, or actually Jesus. They don't have a J in, uh, in the Greek. The closest they have is an I, Jesus. And, uh, and as you know, Greek has different endings. So Isu, Jesus, Ise, and all those things. And uh, then I believe in Arabic or something, I think the Malay language in the nation called uh, Isa. Isa, okay, Isa, and uh, Chinese become Yesu. My God, it sounds like a Chinese person. Yeah, Mister Yesu, like uh, Wong King kind of thing. But uh, and then Chinese have many dialects. I have a dialect uh, called Teochew, and it's a like flowery kind of sing song kind of dialect. So uh, the name of Jesus in my dialect is. Yeah, so, my God, it sounds like a different person. But we're all talking about the same Jesus. Of course, now some of you are getting worried. And by the way, you speak some African languages? Swahili. What's the name of Jesus in Swahili? Yes, yes sir. Okay, not bad. So, uh, yeah, I think the, uh, what I call, trying to get an African song, you know, Agunda, why? Waikata say yes, yes, sir. That's Swahili, right? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> okay. 
we're going to teach that to Singaporeans. A lot of Singapore coming up. Uh, Elijah promised to teach that. Uh, and, uh, so apparently Swahili is like the default of many African tribes because it's easiest to learn. They have about 500 or 1,000 words as a vocabulary. That's correct. Okay, so hallelujah. We can send back there and learn Swahili. <laughs> can pick it up, right? One month, 500 words only. <laughs> Alright, <clears throat> so we have, um, it's just a language, the names and names is just a language. And so, don't get too caught up by the word, cherubim, pastor cherubim is cherubim, seraphim is seraphim. When you look at cross-reference, they are describing the same thing. No doubt they haven't seen each other and they just describe, because the word setup means a fiery being. Let's translate it so that we, we get it straight through. And uh, do you know that in the early days when they were having uh, disputes over water baptism, they purposely didn't translate the word baptizo from the Greek. Because the word baptizo means immense. If they actually translate that, then everyone's really immense. So they just brought it over and romanized the word and we got the new English word baptize and so you continue the controversy whether it's sprinkling, pouring or immersion but if they had translated it, it would have been soft but because of the powers that be at that time they say, ah, oh, no, 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 we just sprinkle will do uh, and so they didn't translate the word and so a whole theology developed a whole controversy because of uh, translation the word Sarah just means a fiery being Cherub means an uh, uh, ox-like, uh, pleasant ox-like uh, looking uh, being. Uh, and, uh, so even though they have a form of humanoid looking dimension, uh, they do have humanoid faces, uh, they tend to paint the cherub, uh, cherub as a uh, human, not human looking face. And uh, so, of course, when you, when you go over to the other passages like uh, Revelation chapter 4 and 5, we can prove without a shadow of a doubt that the most logical conclusion from taking evidences in Ezekiel chapter 1, chapter 10, Isaiah chapter 6, and uh, then uh, Revelation chapter 4 and 5, and put them all together in a very scientific manner without prejudice, without bringing our own preconceived ideas, you have no other choice but to conclude that all these refer to the same beings, the living creatures we call them. We use the New Testament word for them, living creatures, which is from the Greek word zeo. Uh, normally the Greek word for life is zoe, z-o-e, Romanized. But for them, the Bible gives z-o-e, zoa, kind of like creatures full of this life. Uh, which is an acceptable thing. Uh, and uh, I think Ezekiel also refers to them as living creatures uh, in, in some references. But having done that and show that it is the theological and the correct biblical interpretation, you can do exegesis and all the things, you come to the same conclusion. We bring you to the next major demarcation that we look at that was many times not observed. Ezekiel describes the living creatures uh, in a certain pattern, both in chapter 1 and chapter 10. He described them in a sense that like the first living creature he described was a cherub, which is on this side. Let's suppose that that is north, this is south, this is east, and then is west, north, south, east, west. Then, uh, he described the creatures as in this order. First, the cherub, which is uh, the ox looking creature. Second, look like the face of a man because they got four faces. Third, face of a lion. Fourth, face of an eagle. So he describes it in this anti clockwise rotation. John, the apostle, describes it in Revelations as firstly because he's looking from the east and uh, he describes them as uh, having the face of a lion 
So the first living creature in the face of a lion. Ah, uh, he did it first, second, third, etc. So first the face of a lion, second had the face of an ox, third has the face of a man, and fourth has the face of the eagle. The order is different. And we ask ourselves, what causes the change in the description of first living creature, second living creature, third living creature, and fourth living creature? Every aspect of the Bible must have something to teach us. So we brought it to the fact that in the Old Testament, Ezekiel was describing the natural order of these beings. For lack of a better word, I call them beings. They are creatures made by God. And these beings have what I call, for lack of a better word, four gears. Four gears. When they are at a certain level of energizing, they look like a ox, cherubim. Then at the next level of energizing, they look in the, like the face of a man. Then as they gain more energy, they look like the face of a lion. And as they gain even more energy, they go to the fourth level where they look like the face of an eagle. Then when they come down again, the same way, they will, the energy will reduce until they are like face of a lion, face of a man, and then face of an ox. It's like, for lack of a better word, they are like energy descriptions. Now the Olympic Games is on, and uh, sometimes you see some pictures of some of the Olympic runners, their faces look very funny. I remember there was one, I was watching the cycling one, and anyway, congratulations Singapore for winning the first gold medal. Uh, and uh, that must be a big celebration. Uh, no. so, <clears throat> uh, so, there was one cyclist that just came, came on the Olympics thing, and the, the cyclist's face was... <laughs> and so much energy was exerted, because they are trying to get maximum oxygen, I guess. But even human faces look different as we exercise and go to different stages. And, uh, so to a certain extent we express that, or you know, imagine if you have long flowing hair. I'd say, okay, your hair is reasonable. Yeah, it probably doesn't flow. You can have a, uh, you can have a typhoon and you still look the same, right? <laughs> and, uh, uh, Najla's hair, and then maybe uh, 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 I, I call her uh, Jasmine's hair, uh, and uh, you know, be flowing. And I can remember when I uh, hi uh, Pastor Elijah, uh, I was uh, riding the cars in Pastor Elijah, and uh, I think at one point also, uh, Crystal Bell was also in the car. And uh, <coughs> there they like to open the windscreen, kind of thing, when it's hot, kind of thing. And uh, for me, with straight hair, the wind just blows your hair all over the place. Uh, and I could imagine, I look at that, I say, hey, I'm going to wind this up because uh, when I reach there, I'm just completely untidy. Uh, and uh, then I look over the head, their hair has not moved at all. <laughs> it could look the same, you know, with the windows open. Hallelujah. They could even be, you know, one of the things you notice, like, don't know why, dogs love to look out the windows. If they ride in the car, if they have a chance. And they will put their face out with a long time. Uh, and smiling all the way, you know, with the head sticking up. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, we humans have that, and if your head is flowing, I don't remember whether you got this, this uh, advertisement, but advertisement that they used to come out in a while, and they were selling shampoo, and there was this uh, long African looking man, and uh, then, uh, so, uh, and, and it's come, and, and Everyone used different shampoo, but his shampoo was the advertising one. And he goes, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Wow, just flowing beautifully. And uh, so nice looking hair. Uh, there was that. Okay, so imagine a person with those braids. And I imagine if they're running, uh, the braids will flow around. And they will actually look especially like a lion. And they get that picture across. They look like a fish, they look like a lion. And uh, so we humans, you know, we have different facial expressions as we, we, we try to 
uh, energize or concentrate on different things. And uh, so this gives you a glimpse of these special creatures. Uh, we got to understand them and know their habitation and know they are. Ezekiel gives what I call the natural flow of energy. John gives what I call, which is very important to us, the end time formation. The end time formation. Because after he introduced them in chapter 4 and chapter 5, then when the seals were opened, each of the first four seals, a different living creature made the announcement. You notice that? Then the first living creature said, second living creature and the four horses. And each represents something, which is part of this teaching we're going into. So John gives what I call the end time formation. And then I mentioned how that things have changed even more when our Lord Jesus Christ had promoted mankind, made a little lower than the angels. Now in Christ we raised to the highest dimension that we will see a different dimension where the face of the man is number four. Face of the man is number four. And uh, because Jesus took upon himself the face of a man. And he brought you, he put his DNA inside that. And there's a higher level of energizing. And this is important. Because it also means that something has taken place in the four living creatures and the 24 elements, which we want to look at. But I've thrown quite a few other points I'm going to touch on in the next two weeks. But for today, having introduced and brought you up to speed of where we are, I'd like you to look very carefully at uh, the four living creatures and Moses will have met them and uh, you see that these four living creatures was introduced first by Moses without describing the four faces. Uh, describing the four faces. In that uh, the cherubim was supposed to be the finale of the Ark of the Covenant. And let's get the passage in chapter 25. Here we got it. And he used the word cherub, a cherubim. Now remember that Ezekiel saw the cherubim with four faces. But when they made the cherubim with the wings touching above the mercy seat, they only made them with one face. Technically, they can have four faces. Now we will solve the mystery of the four faces afterwards. There are two possible ways they can have four faces. And I talk about it afterwards. If I forgot, please raise up your hand. Say, tell us about the four faces. Alright, make four faces for me. Then I'll do that. Now. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so, we can have many faces. Sad face, happy face, stern face. Alright, anyway. So, we have here in chapter 25 of Exodus. And it says here, Verse 17 onwards. Oops, it's gone over again. You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits shall be its line, and a cubit and a half its width. You shall make two cherubim of gold or hammer work. You shall make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at one end, and the other cherub. At the other end. Do you know no one actually knows what it looks like? Because no one has seen the ark. And uh, whatever they try to make imagine today is from somebody's imagination. But I believe that following the original word cherub, which is the word karup, uh, karup. It says, of uncertain derivation. See, the Hebrew says, uncertain. Uh, cherub or imaginary figure. Uh, angelic being, guarding. But there was no description of what they looked like. They always had drawn them looking like angels. But they 
are slightly different. All right, now. So he says here, uh, we do know that there are cherubs that can look like humans. Because remember, one, two, three, four. Second gear is the face of a man. In fact, remember that there was a cherubim in the Garden of Eden. You described that. It was a cherubim. And that cherubim displayed the face of a man. So they can at different energy levels. Now we have a different iteration. We humans have two stages, sleep and wake. Sleep and wake. And uh, in the in the in heaven, we don't need to sleep. But there's a stage of what I call uh, meditative uh, waiting on the Lord, and then there's the stage of um, what we call active activity and then there are two stages of in between in between which is why they always tell you that the best time to physically exercise is more towards the middle of the day end of the day when your muscles have sort of uh, already been warm up kind of thing now many exercises in the morning too but when you do so you have to warm up your muscles and then we also physically slowly come down and, uh, before we enter a state of sleep. And some people lost that because they, have, they, they lost their ability and so they suffer insomnia. But that's the state of humans. We don't need sleep, but it's a state of absorption. Uh, call it a state of waiting on the Lord. Uh, and so in heaven, in your mansion, there were a few things missing. No toilets, definitely no, no kitchen. But who wants to do cooking? Nothing needs to be cooked. Whatever you desire appear before you. Of course it comes from the garden somewhere. And so no kitchen. And what else, you know, don't you have? Okay. Yeah! Bed. Why do you need pillows? Huh? Do you still need a heavenly bolster? Bates. Because in a technical sense, you don't need those things. Now there's a dimension hidden in God in what I call under the mystery of Christ where there are big chambers. That one, I will be wondering what that is. But outside of that, in normal mention, none. Because you don't need to sleep. Then what do we do? You have a type of that in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall walk and not faint. They shall run and not be weary. They shall mount up with wings like do you know these four stages? Four stages? Because it seems the four stages are this. Waiting, walking, running, flying. Of course, today in fallen man, you cannot fly. But when you go to heaven, you can. Uh, you, can you can move about without wings. Uh, and you can decide to fly. The only thing is in heaven when you move from place to place or galaxy to galaxy, you don't need like Superman to fly like kind of thing. And then the song of pa, I forgot Superman song what it's like. Pa 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 whatever. No. Have you seen Jesus going up ascending go with a bit of a white cape maybe? No. You know how Jesus flies? He just stands there. And he goes up. It'll be interesting great to fly, isn't it? Not isn't it? Now every time you have to go to play. Why you think you're incredible how or something? You know? You gotta do the jump and then you fly off. 
No way! You could fly in any position. In fact, you can hold a half of guitar and, and just play. Interesting, isn't it, heaven? And you know the thing about heaven because gravity doesn't rule you? When you want to sit, you just sit without a chair. How interesting. You could just sit without a chair. <laughs> Some mysteries are interesting things that happen. Let's not get distracted. Go back to our living creatures. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 shows the four stages. Which is, now copying the north, south, east, west thing. Wait. Walk. Run. Fly. Now how does it go back? To this walk. Because Jesus added a fifth stage. So to them it's like a, like above it is a fifth stage. Shoo, another level of face of the man. Like a man, but yet not a man. It's higher than the eagle. Because it is Jesus DNA. First born. Firstborn means never, never before shown. Jesus was the firstborn. Second Corinthians five verse seventeen says, "New species." Now, have you noticed when Jesus made appearance that there were two times recorded in the Bible after his resurrection that they didn't quite recognize him? That was a reason behind it. He is a man yet not a man. And the first was the two disciples on the way to Emmaus. And he appeared and they still cannot tell. He is in, in humanoid form. But when they look, they still cannot tell that it was Jesus. Of course, you can say that Jesus purposely changed. Okay, tell me how, how he changed. Did Jesus you know, change under his nose was longer, change longer. How, how, how you tell me how did he change? Remember, you're talking about God. He don't simply do something just for the fun of it or disguise. There's a reason behind everything. And you know what caused the change? Because he is human yet not human. He, he has nothing to do with making his nose longer or making his hand look less Jewish. Right, he could have. But they didn't recognize him. They looked. And actually, he was exactly as he was. There were no changes to his manifest nose, eyes, eyebrow. No, he didn't purposely grow thicker eyebrow until it's only one eyebrow. One to the other. Shh. And what they would be very strange men who have one eyebrow. <laughs> Right, then definitely they might not recognize him. They are trying to visualize you with one eyebrow. <laughs> right. No! He was exactly the same. But there was something in his DNA that was different. That prevented them from actually associating this person with the Jesus they might have seen. Who has done miracles before. Remember, these are disciples of Jesus. Then the other time was his own disciples in the Gospel of John. When he was standing on the shore, a distance, and then they had been fishing the whole night. And then the voice came from the shore and said, Children, do you have any fish? And he said, No. Then the voice says, Cast your net on the side. And when they did, there were 153 fish. So that the boat was sinking. Then John and Peter, remember John was always lying on the bosom of Jesus and he always had a different view of Jesus from everybody else. He knew Jesus. And in the end, he cannot tell by recognition. He has to tell by the incident that happened. Even John didn't recognize Jesus. John, the apostle, didn't recognize Jesus. It was only the miracle occurred. He said, this, this is Jesus. 
Now, let's say from here to where, you know, today is a pretty interesting summer day. So I put the car under the shade. Right? That's about, let's say, about uh, 50 meter, 50 meter dash, right? I reckon under the tree there. Would that be? 100 meter? 50 meters? Oh, I forgot! <laughs> okay, you deal with feet! Hum, hum! Hum, hum, okay! Wow, I'm blown on that one! <laughs> okay, one meter is three feet six inch or something. Okay, I'm straight. <laughs> that, but what, how do you watch the Olympic? 100 meter dash? So you speed measure train by feet. Thank you very much. Okay, I estimate it's about 15 meters. Now at 15 meters, if any one of you are standing there, I could still, if your eyes are being pretty good, you still made out who that person is. You can. Once you know the person, you know, you can see, oh, it's a Jeffrey coming over, or whatever. You could tell. But they could not tell. Remember, it was not so far so that the voice cannot travel. Let's not assume a supernatural travel of voices. Let's assume that it's natural at the moment. It has to be not so far where his voice still can reach them. And yet it's the far enough so that there's a distance. And they cannot recognize him. The something was different. It was the face of the man, but it was the fifth level of the face of the man. One, two, three, four, five. Up here. That was why it's a different. Because that level is like the four living creatures added the new heaven, new earth dimension. That didn't belong to this old heaven, old earth. Although this present heaven is fantastic. This present earth, you know, is in a way a redemption. But there's a new heaven, new earth level that has added to Jesus. And it's almost like our Lord Jesus, remember in this universe, He was in the beginning was a word and the word was with God. He was the first. Then He created all things. Almost similarly, He, when He rise up from the dead, He was the firstborn. But yet he was not created being, he is the I am. He, he rose up, when he rose up, he was the beginning of new heaven and new earth. He has to be Jesus first. So he was the first being that entered the dimension of new heaven and new earth. And then the rest of us entered through him. Then by the time Revelation chapter 21 took place after the judgment and after the millennium, when all the whole earth and all heaven was rolled about like a scroll, then all the creatures could come through Jesus into the new heaven and new earth. It was a higher dimension of the four living creatures. So, if Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, wait, walk, Run. You all know the difference between walking and running, right? <laughs> Technically. You know how sometimes when people have what I call the big walk? And you know, they, they really don't walk like normal walking. Uh, they call that what I call power walking. Oh, their hips are swinging, right? Like, like nobody's business. <laughs> I know. Uh, then some walk so fast that they look like running. You know how they tell? Because when you run, there is a time when both your feet are off the ground. When you're walking, at least one of your feet is touching the ground. You didn't know the technical measurement. So when you walk fast, you always have one feet on the ground. The speed is different, the space is uh, and, and the measurement between the steps could be longer because you're taking big steps or quick steps and uh, so that's how when the big walk they watch and disqualify people and say hey that's not walking that's running when both their feet are um, above you know if you like to test it up right now in this beautiful summer hot sun 
Go for a run, come back. You will find that at some time, both your feet are above the ground. So you could capture it on a super speed camera and see a person running, let's say take 100 pictures, and you can examine, you will find a space where both feet are off the ground. You didn't know it, eh? But that's a technical thing. Anyway, so difference between walking and running, the reason why I got a technical thing, waiting, you all know, is like the rest and quietness. Nothing moving as much as possible. Only God moving into you. Walking, you still got one feet on the ground. The ground represents that you are halfway, halfway between, um, halfway between the natural realm and the spiritual realm. So some of you, when you pray all night, between sleep and wake, you were, and then you got a lot of these in-between visions or semi-dreams because you're half. Running, both your feet are off the ground. Flying, oh, you're already sorry in a dimension for heaven. So a redefinition of all those things. That is a sample of how there are these four stages even when we are not the living creatures. But the living creatures show that in a more dramatic way. Like for them as they absorb the energy, it's like a DNA change. Like the DNA grows from, from a normal closed flower and it open fully into a flower and then they close back again and they draw. Just like you see some flowers that flower at certain times of the day and then they close up again. Uh, they are like that. Like almost not just an energy, but almost in them I would call it a DNA change. So that their features even change. Because they are not humans. Why are they that way? How can their changes be so dramatic? Because they are the custodians of all of God's energy. All the energy of God has to be pumped through these creatures. And for lack of a better description of what, they are like step down transformers. Step down transformers. So that the energy of God can be stepped down into different levels where all the rest of the universe can absorb from. It's almost like uh, you might have a transformer. Some transformer got only like um, uh, two, two choices. You know? uh, they could, for example, for here you need step up transformer to 110 to 230 volts, which is what most of the uh, uh, British uh, colony worlds use. But uh, when you are in, like, in Singapore and you got something that, that can only take 110 volts, then you might need a step down transformer. Step it down. But then, most stepper transformer, because it depends on the coil of the wires inside, the magnetic coils, uh, they would draw some energy from, okay, you got the choice of 9 volts, 230 volts, 110 volts, or 12 volts, and then you can plug in different voltage. Because they, they have like in between breaks between the coils, uh, and they draw the energy from them. So they are like that. The four living creatures. They could take in all of God's energy and then retransmit it through them to the rest of the universe. The 24 elders and archangels and all that, they draw from the energy that comes forth. Which explains why in Exodus they are really present in the up of the covenant. Because that was where God was bringing his energy. Every time and any time when God wants to bring forth His energy, you will find the four living creatures. They are the, like, the first contact of the uncreated dimension to the created dimension of created beings. Jesus is an exception. There's a new exception coming, which is the Bride of Christ. But then we touch on towards the finale. At the moment, 
look at these beings and understand who these beings are. And some of you might say, hey, I'm the bride of Christ, I'm in Christ, I'm exceptional. I will go straight to Christ. Christ energized me. And if Christ in me, I can take all the energy of God. Even the Bible says, God made men a little lower than the angels. Yeah, you, you can do that when your spirit, soul, and body have been glorified. Until your body is glorified, until your soul is glorified, you are a little lower. But let him make it more sarcastic. You're not lower! The Bible is just very polite. You're a little lower. A lot lower. That's why we need the angels to work with us. To merge with us. To bring us up to their level of energy and then another level of energy. But in these end times, they have done things they have never done before. In Kenneth Higgins' book, I believe in visions. There's a chapter where he was taken to the throne room. When he was at the throne room, he saw these four living creatures. And he was fascinated. Because he says they have eyes all around. And as he looked at them, Jesus told him, Don't you look. And got his attention back to Jesus. And Jesus gave him some words, prophecy, instructions, and he came back. But he went to heaven and saw quickly. Now these four living creatures in these end times reveal their names, energize individuals. Pastor Ezra was one of those energized by, and they even give their name, Jamia Chakel. Our Jehuda was energized by Otto Chakel. At first, you only know me as Otto. But our poor white is good also. Yeah, yeah. I have a fullness of name. Now, when you were energized by them for the first time, you said the whole bit shook. Yeah, it shook me in the bed. It shook you on the bed. And so we go, at least one witness. Were you awake when the bed was shaking? Yeah. <laughs> I was awake. You were awake. How badly was the bed shaking? Did you move from one end of the room to the other? No, but I had to say, hey, are you okay? What's going on with you? Wow. It was very good. And because God was bringing his energy level higher. And only after the energizing, you began to have contact with the spirit. Remember before that, I say something you couldn't hear. Then later on, then other things began to happen. Because these are the end times. They, we need them. Hey, we need them. If you're saying, you know, oh, all I need is Jesus. All I need is Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't need to go to church or something. I stay at home, talk to Jesus. Yeah, all I need is Jesus. All I need is Jesus. Yeah, no need any fellowship, but just stay at home and have Jesus. Yeah. And uh, all I need is Jesus. No need angels. No need. Yeah, yeah, stay at home. No need, no need any You are Jesus. Uh, and we, 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 we misunderstand what Jesus meant. When all things come from Jesus. And it is the order. They even can again. You know, but this default mode that we all access direct to God. And then at one time, when in one of his earlier visions, same book, I believe, vision. When, uh, let me see which occasion. Uh, that was after he had gone through some financial crisis. See, you need angels. And uh, then Jesus appeared in the vision, giving some instruction. Then he saw this angel next to Jesus. And every time he turned to the angel, the angel wanted to open his mouth and say something. Then he turned back to Jesus. And then Jesus finished his instruction. Then he again asked uh, Jesus, who is this angel? And then the angel says, uh, then Jesus said, this is your angel. He has a message for you. This is what can I mean to Jesus, you're here. You could give me the message. I don't 
and you this almost like an insult to Jesus. You know, it's just like uh, it's just like uh, you want to see the prime minister all the time. Oh, here you go, your president. All the time, everything you want, president, your president, your president. You know, there are departments, protocol departments that are established. And uh, when you have to pay your taxes, you don't make an appointment to see the president of the United States. When uh, you got a uh, traffic problem, you don't make an appointment to see the president of the United States. <laughs> when uh, you know uh, your car breaks down, you don't make an appointment to see the president of the United States. Uh, when you complain about the car uh, or insurance company or something happened to your bank, you don't make an appointment to see the president of the United States. It's obvious there are systems in your government departments that take care of different things. So Jesus sort of said, you know, this is his protocol, this is his method. And he said, you know, haven't you read my scriptures? In fact, Jesus almost repeated, haven't you read my scriptures? And uh, so finally, you know, he sort of surrendered, okay, okay, this is the thing. And then he turned to the angel, the first thing the angel says, I'm your, an uh, no, I'm your angels and my angel said, my angel? You got many angels under you? And then he was still new to all these things. And then he said, he talked about how, and he's doing specific things. He says, you know, when you uh, when you go into the tech ministry or something, uh, there will be this person that offer to do it for you. Don't take that one, and uh, uh, because uh, the person wants to control you and uh, you know continue to depend on me. And then he says, I'll be, you'll be receiving that amount of money and certain amount of money that you'll be praying for and all these things. So then you realize, they for their work. Hebrews chapter one: Angels are sent to minister to those who are heirs of salvation. This is God's protocol. So, the four living creatures have their role in this end time to merge and to energize us. The reason why God made the first picture of that, where there are two wings touching, He was slowly introducing them. Because in Ezekiel, their wings were also touching. Remember that? So what you saw at the Ark of the Covenant was a glimpse of a section of them. When two of their wings touch, shoo, they create an energy. And that energy was so powerful in the Old Testament, in the Ark of the Covenant, between the mercy seat, that when they put Aaron's or rod in the presence of the energy, its DNA changed and it bore branches, leaves, flowers, and it bore fruit in one night. In one night. That shows how much energy. Remember, life is the energy. Zoe or Zoa. That was just the upper the covenant. They always are around when when there is a necessity to transmit energy or step down energy to be received. And they were there stepping down the amount of energy to the Holy of Holies, which is already very super energized in the Old Covenant. Then you have in Ezekiel's time, which is Ezekiel chapter, <coughs> looking here in Ezekiel chapter 10, jump forward to Ezekiel chapter 10, what we are doing this study is to understand the work of these four living creatures. And you can see my main point that I'm bringing first is how they relate to the energies and the life of God that flows forth. So in chapter 10, the whole title, subtitle to the whole chapter is The Glory Departs from the Temple. So they are there to take the energy back to God from the temple. Now today, as far as I know, there is still one cherub left near to the wailing wall. And he's been standing there since Solomon dedicated the temple. He's not exactly on the wailing wall, just off it. And uh, the old Sanhedrin's prophet went there, and Archangel Ure was with him. And as he was looking at him, he says, "He's been here thousands of years." 
and he's still standing there. Now that cherubim will move, will move around 2055 to the area where the Ark of the Covenant is hidden. And especially after Israel welcomed the false Messiah. But he has not moved. But God just left one as a symbolic gesture. And also he's energizing something to make sure that the prophecies of God uttered by the prophets of all modern prophets will be fulfilled. All things will be fulfilled. So the, so there is a cherubim there. And what you don't see in Ezekiel here is this. The formation of the four when they work together is a completion. It's like, it's like completion. And they came down and all the energy was transferred back into them. Called the glory. And they took it all back. You can see this story in chapter 10. And uh, <clears throat> then there's also judgment that took place in verse 2. He spoke to the man cloth in linen. And uh, so they appeared the face of the man, which is uh, second year. And then he went up, and as I watched, then it was three. The cherubim was standing on the south side of the temple. When a man went in. Now, the south side is the face of the man because the temple was also based, uh, fa built facing east. East is the direction. So that would be north, south, east, west. So on the south side, which is the face of the man, which is where the face of the man appears. When a man went in, the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub paused over the threshold of the temple and the house was filled with a cloud and the court was full of brightness of Lord's glory. Not everybody saw it. If you were there that day and you were a natural human, you might see nothing, hear nothing. You're just aware something, something might have taken place. Only those with spiritual eyes could have seen what Ezekiel saw. And the sound of the wings of the cherubim were heard even in the outer court, like the voice of the Almighty God when He speaks. Then it happened when he commanded the man, clothed in linen, saying, Take fire from among the wheels, from among the cherubim. Went in and stood beside the wheels, and the cherub stretched out his hand from among the cherub cherubim, to the fire that was among the cherubim, took some of it, put it in the hands of the man, clothed in linen, who took it and went out. Cherubim appeared to the form of a man's hand under their wings. Then he described the wheels, their formation, and they describe their faces in verse 14. Uh, that's the order I mentioned. First, the cherub. Second, the man. Third, the lion. Fourth, the eagle. And the of And um, then it stood still for a while in verse 17. In verse 18. The glory of the Lord departed from the threshold temple, stood over the cherubim. The cherubim lifted their wings, mounted up the, from the earth. And they took the glory of God. Shoo! Took it all out. The energy was reduced in the temple. That is why after that, the temple could be destroyed. You know, as long as the glory of God is there, any army trying to destroy it would have been killed. So they drew, just as they can impart, they can draw out all the energies of God. And they went forth. They're always associated with the energies and the life of God. Their presence and their merging with us is vitally important. In Isaiah chapter 6, in Isaiah chapter 6, we have um, Isaiah looking at what he described as seraphim. He did not see the four faces we explained last week because they covered their faces. That's how he discovered they were six wings. With a pair of wings, they covered their face. So Isaiah never got to see the four faces. 
but he described that as fiery being, seraphim. And verse 6, one of the seraphim flew to me having it in his hand a light coal which had taken with the tongs from the altar. And of course it touched him and something changed with him. On that day not only was he cleansed, an energy came into his life. He became like a different person. Energy levels were different. It does affect DNA level to a certain extent. And the next time you see them around, and this time under the Apostle John in the book of Revelations, in uh, Revelation chapter 4, when he went to the throne room, they were described there. In verse 7, first living creature, he called him living creature. And John saw them differently. He said they're full of eyes in front and at the back. And uh, first living creature was a lion, second a calf, third face of a man, fourth an eagle, each had six wings. And they cried, Holy, Holy, Lord God Almighty. Now, the reason why they have eyes, and here is where there are two explanations on this. They can appear as a cherub singularly by itself, with one face. I mean, one of those creatures. And they can go through the iterations. First year, second year, third year, fourth year. So, if one of the creatures iterate very fast between the first year to the fourth year, then it will be like my hand, which has five fingers. And when my hand moves very fast, it almost looks like there are ten fingers. So for them, as their energy level goes up and down, if they move very fast, it looks like they got four faces. Let me describe a vision that of an angel appearing to have two faces. Between North and South Korea, we know the Korean Archangel. His name is Yu Er Gyu Ra El. And we met up with him when we all uh, being all done. He stands towards the northern side, uh, towards Parmesan, that side, uh, near, right almost like in between the north and the south border. And as he stands there, if you look up at him in his role as the archangel standing, because to them there's only one Korea. We actually went back and we stepped into North Korea. And now we step in, you go to the demilitarized zone. And as a tourist, you're allowed to go in and then there's a line there in one conference room, a uh, 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 little building where they have their, their negotiation. Oh, do you go there? Yes. Uh, and then when you cross the line, they will say congratulations, you're now in North Korea. Kind of thing. But it's on the same table. And, uh, and then it's very strange because all the guards stand so still, like the mannequin. When you look closer, they are real humans. Uh, and, uh, so, I saw Korea in the same day out there, and I'm like, don't move. It's like the challenge is not to move. Kind of thing. And then in South Korea, also, they have different uniform. I forgot how they stand. Oh, yeah, they stand like that. They look almost like the. Isn't the Buckingham Palace? Those fellows with a nice looking furry head. They also don't move, kind of thing. It's almost like some sort of, I don't know what, the, it seems to be very common among all these all these um, uh, royalty or parade kind of thing. But there they were, and they're not mannequin, they're a real, real guy. And, uh, so, uh, the reason we stuck in because we wanted to claim North Korea also. And so we, we told them, our angel on our first trip, we will come back again. And we stepped into that as a claim. Remember during the fourth phase where we stepped into every country. And uh, anyway, the Archangel is parked uh, further up near the border. And if you have open vision or you could see him, God you to see him, you will see him standing. And uh, he's and then he's like looking, he looks towards the north, but then he looks like got two faces. One of his faces facing the north. 
when his face is looking towards the south, you wonder, how do they achieve that? How do they achieve that? It's because we, we must understand that that is our perception. But what happens is, because they can face both sides very fast, and the speed that they, they move is faster than the speed of light, uh, which breaks Einstein's law anyway. Uh, so, because it turns very fast, it looks like he has two faces. But when he comes to talk to you, you can see that he's a normal humanoid looking, human looking uh, 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 being with one side of the face and there's a back. That's interesting. Now from there, let me bring it further. These living creatures called cherub, cherub, because they got four energy forms which changes their features, if they move very fast, you will see like they got four faces. If they're spinning around very fast, if I spin fast, which I cannot, it will look like I have a face all around, correct? It will look like my face is facing everywhere. It will spin very fast, round and round. And uh, that is what happens. First explanation for how they got four faces. Because of the energy that they have, if they move and iterate very fast in one position, you will see four faces. So all four of them are moving. The second explanation, and this is interesting, when you can have four of the living creatures, each one retaining the gear and they merge. So each one is actually four and they face both ways. So there is two possible ways in which they can do the four faces. And they can actually do the four faces that way. Now, they don't always go in four but they tend to go in pairs, minimum two pairs. Why do you have a pair of cherubim in the outer covenant? Because when they pair up, energy is released. By themselves, they can release energy. So when they pair up, in the outer covenant, two cherubim, each one looking over the mercy seat. Their wings are spread touching. And where the wings touch, right below is the mercy seat, a pair of them. You can have a pair of four of them. Here's my interesting question, of which there's no definite answer, because the Bible is silent. Do you think that they have the one that we see when the four are in a pair, are they like four each making the four faces so you got four 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 or are they one each moving very fast making one two three four you got two choices unless you got a new theory Now, just want to see your show of hands. How many of you think is one creature with four gears moving fast? We create the four faces. Okay, how many of you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, how many of you think that there was a merging? And each of those can actually four of them merge together with four faces. One, two, three. Hey, you answer for both, four, five. You think it's both? No, because the, the first. You change your mind between. Yeah, because the second one sounded more than the first. The first one. Okay. Now, I'm interested in my error perceived that way. 
Well, because uh, we were at Cocky one day and he told me that that's what they did. That's not fair. Okay, anybody might give me. Okay. I don't know. Uh, now, these. Yes? But, uh, yeah. I've seen them in the throne room in the four individuals. Yeah. And then uh, when they, they worship, the energy gets so much, it's like they come into one and they're all four at the same time. Yeah, all four became one. Yeah. Squashed together. Yeah, it's like uh, it's so fast, though. And then, uh, plus, I've met the different ones. So it's four. Have you been to the planet yet? No, China. The planet of the living creatures. Where you got a whole planet full of them. Interesting. Where do you say one? Because, uh, like, just one body and one pair of legs. Four heads, one pair of legs. Because the leg not moving, so you only see one pair of legs. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. Not bad. Not bad, I guess. <laughs> Any other body you want to define anything? Yes, Lona. If there are more than one, then why do they actually only shoot themselves with one name? Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Which brings the next question, before we look at the Bible, to this. We say that each of you, like for example, Eruel, Abraham and Jehuda and um, you know then the face of a man are supposedly um, representing or merging with the four living creatures, correct? And then there is a first generation merging of the four living creatures, which would be Deborah and you have a TL and then you have Eddie and you have Justin. So my question is this. The first generation and second generation, which you all probably have asked the question, are they merging with the same creature or different creature? Okay, what you're thinking? Here's my other question. You see them appearing in Ezekiel's time. You see them appearing in Isaiah's time. Now, Isaiah was in the time of... Um, Hezekiah. Ezekiel was almost like uh, the exilic period started. He was among the exiles. So they separated by quite a few hundred years. Uh, at least quite, I didn't measure so better than uh, quote the number of years, but quite a big gap of years between Hezekiah to the last king. And then John saw them, right? Thousands of years later, or oh, less, how long was that? Quite, quite a long time between the period of the king, then the gap of 400 years, and then John, another 100 years towards the uh, time. So, quite a big gap. Many centuries. The side question that how you answer the other question Are they the same fellows? What do I mean? Are they the same guys who were doing that job in Ezekiel, in Isaiah, holy, 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 and then in John? You know, are they the same guys? Because after all, there's no unemployment in God's kingdom. <laughs> and nobody dies, nobody gets tired, so you could actually serve God forever and ever and ever and ever. Are they the same guys? Are you gonna say something about that? D different creatures? Different dimensions are the same? Different dimensions are the same creature. Can you explain that you were here, but also in 2006? Ah, okay. So, so they enter into a time portal where there is no time, and so it's like they serve for a few minutes. They will separate that from the side. Okay, interesting. The scientists got anything to say? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Any, any, okay, do you think they're the same creatures or different ones? Okay. I think they're the same. They're the same? Yeah. Same guys. Okay. 
which brings us to the second sub-question based on your answer. Then what's the whole planet on them for? Do they get a chance to do the job? Or the job is taken by four and since nobody dies, since there's no unemployment, once the job is taken by four, the others got no other chance to be in the four. Can they like gather together in the planet just like, you know, imagine these creatures growing up like little kids kind of thing. So they can go, hey, hey, grandpa, papa is there. And let's do the formation. Shoom, and shoom, they got some energy. Uh, but they can never be like that the rest of their lives. Interesting question. Yes, just a bit. So they are the same guys, uh. okay. So like if, if, if one of them was named K, then it was K all the time serving in like the north position. Or let's call it A, B, C, right? That's A, A, B, C, D. So uh, the, the same individuals were serving. Yeah, so it's going to be four A, B, C, D. Yeah. But even if there are planets on them, there are still A, B, C, D. On the planets? Yeah. Oh, oh, even if they got planets on them, yeah. the other planet is just a planet, yeah. but it's still A, B, C, D. So on the planet, they were E, F, G, H, yeah. and I, J, K, yeah? they, don't, they don't replace them. Yeah. It's always A, B, C, D. Mm. Interesting. See, we need to reason through this because we are we're dealing with a four living creature. Yes. Any other theories? Yes. Um, because there's a plan of them, they could, like, usually, they can switch out without you really knowing. They can disappear, they can invisible. No, no, they can switch out in between without anyone knowing also. Yeah. It's from a, like, an investigation point of view, it's the same. Or they could be switching out and having a, uh, Every, everyone has its like uh, age. Certain. So they got rotations, huh? Like yeah, the right, twenty-four, right. like like the twenty-four hour worship different teams. Yeah. So they got different teams. So that means uh, your position is that when Ezekiel is looking, and um, and Isaiah is looking, John the apostle is looking. Possibly he might be not looking at A B C. He might be looking at E F G H. And then I J K L M. Unless their rotation came back to A B C D. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. So then, they all they all have the same name when we or you only ever see the one that you met. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a good question. Do they all have the same names? Um, they, I think they have to say like shared consciousness. Shared consciousness. Okay. okay. We're coming to insects, right? <laughs> Insects have shared consciousness. <laughs> abort, abort. Press the press the escape button. Yeah. Okay. You gonna say something? No, I'm still. Yes, still. Okay. Standing by, standing by the understanding. Interesting. Okay. Now the reason why we are trying to explain them is this: we put them to be like humans. All these questions arise because we look at them from the human perspective. So the questions are caused by our own humanness. And you will, we humanize everything. So we measure it based on our human perspective. Like for example, do you know that God has the pie in a full number is not like in finite numbers, 3.142, etc. Because we are using human numbering system based on 10. But God has this, 
the circle like a circle divided by the diameter is how you get pi. But God doesn't use a number system. He uses another type of system whose measurement is totally different and is a complete number. The number is exactly three in our translation. But it doesn't use it based on the ten. Now, the closest a human has got to that was a guy called Euler, but spelled as E U L E R. I used to pronounce the name Euler. I found out it's Euler, who is one of the most brilliant mathematical minds the human race has produced. Even right now, not all his books have been translated into English. You check in the internet, E U L E R. He brought an equation that was amazing to everybody. An equation that included pi, the number e, as you know the number e is necessary in calculation of ratios, which is all infinite, square root of minus one, and you combine it in one beautiful equation. That gives you a glimpse of what numbering system is like to God. So a lot of things we are looking for a human perspective. Um, and here is where we try to get a sense of it. There are many types of lives that doesn't have a single consciousness. Our life form has a single consciousness. When Adam became uh, when, when the first man became Adam and Eve, he suddenly had two consciousness, correct? Adam could think independently from the woman. But when they were first one being, they had a single consciousness. We saw that in the Bible. Now here is where I try to use Bible allegory to help us understand this type of beings in Genesis chapter 1. Now we already covered our first point, we are dealing with the second point. Our first point was they are like energy beings. They take energy from God and they can bring it to various dimensions that are needed. And uh, the second point is to understand their nature and uh, what they are like. In Genesis chapter 2, we have here that the human race has existed without gender and then later on with gender. Oops. Okay. Touch. Okay. And that is uh, in verse uh, 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept. He took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib which the Lord had, God had taken from man, he made into a woman. He brought her to the man. So there was a time when Adam had Eve inside him. And I can describe to you on vision. The Bible is silent, so we don't give anything. John, John Austin always said that Jesus was five foot seven inch because he was five foot seven inch. So everybody else is too tall or too short. He's a joker. He's a nice pastor, pastor uh, uh, John Austin. The father of Joel Austin. And, um, but um, uh, for my look, Jesus was actually closer to 5 feet, 10, 11. You know, he's really taller than that. So, anyway, John Austin is already in heaven. You will find out right now. And, uh, but, I mean, the physical manifestation of Jesus. Okay. Then we have uh, Adam. He was actually about 10 feet tall and without gender. Uh, this part is extra biblical, but the Bible is not against it because no one knows the height. He has to have a height, right? So you can put a guess there on any height, but don't guess like 6 inches, of course. It's ridiculous. And, uh, but he was about 10 feet. And, um, Wow, I'm glad this, we are in the back to the old system of feet, right? So 10 feet, you can imagine what it was like. 
And then when he slept, it's not like God literally did an operation on him. It was like suddenly there was like this globe of blood that came back out of him. And then he was asleep. And then it grew uh, and it became a woman. It's like it's all invisibly done. And then when Adam woke up, he was around seven feet tall. Imagine you're not sleeping and get up. <laughs> what happened? I'm the whole giant a lot. <laughs> Three feet is quite a lot. <laughs> so, and uh, Eve was about six feet tall. Well, they were tall. In, those. in fact, during the time of uh, the period before Noah, everything was big and massive. Remember how we described the elephants in the downloads on the Old Testament? Huge. All the creatures were huge, big. Uh, compared to, to, to today's animals which are big, it's tiny portion, very tiny. And uh, so uh, the elephants were like mammoth size. If I remember correctly, we described it. We described it. Huge. I think it was uh, 10 feet by how many feet? A huge mammoth thing we described. And the door of the ark, the door of the ark, was just nice for the elephant to go in. So imagine how big it was. It was everything was big, and the humans were, were big. And uh, so Adam was about seven feet, and uh, Eve was about six feet. They were two consciousness. We all know that before Eve came back, there was only one consciousness, correct? Now try to imagine. Try to imagine. A type of being with the ability to merge and unmerge. And when they merge, it became one consciousness. And there is no limit to the number that they merge, but it seems to be that they retain the number of four all the time. These are the four living creatures. The four living creatures. They merge. Now, I need to give you as much biblical uh, scriptures as possible, right? I'm trying, I'm stretching the imagination, adding some extra biblical vision. But look over the book of Ezekiel chapter 10. Ezekiel chapter 10. Look at how successful their merging was. In Ezekiel chapter 10. Okay. Now, it's description on how the merging was, and it says in verse 9, when I look, there were four wheels by the cherubim. One, one wheel by one cherub, another wheel by each other cherub. The wheels appear to have the color of barrel stone. And um, It's like a yellowish colored thing, more like a fiery orange color. As for their appearance, all four look alike. As it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went toward any of their four directions. They did not turn aside when they went but followed in the direction the head was facing. But they all had four, uh, four, four heads each. So it was like they could go this way, that way, that way, without turning. Like for us, we need to turn around and walk. Then we need to walk that side, turn around and walk. They don't need, they just any direction. And, uh, and it says, their whole body was swell with their back, their hands, their wings, the wheels that the forehead were full of eyes all around. That part? That part is interesting, isn't it? Full of eyes. Not just the head. These things that look up to you. And they were full of eyes. As for the wheels, they were called in my hearing, wheel. That's how you know it's wheel. <laughs> 
interesting, isn't it? Bible Jenny tells you things that are so simple. Look, in verse 13. How did he know they were wheels? Because he had them calling them wheels. <laughs> and he says, and the wheels are from the Hebrew word Galaka. Galaka. Uh, by replication from the wheel, by analogy, a wheel mean actually. It doesn't mean wheel because when you talk about wheels, some of you imagine that there these four creatures got tires under them. So they look like they're all wheelchairs, <laughs> they, you know, moving about. No! <laughs> the word wheel in the original mean whirlwind. So they were this spinning thing, like whirlwind. But I said the whirlwind is sideways. You know, whirlwind is normally upwards. But this is sideways. So like when you look, it looks like a wheel actually, but it's a whirlwind flowing. And it looks like your eyes like that. John never had the same description in John chapter 4. Uh, Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 5. And the one creature coming out. So the answer to the first question, both of you are right. There are times when there are one creature each. There are times when there are four of each. When there are four of each, you have a situation where tremendous waving takes place. Because of more energy. And remember, there are eyes all over. And then, so both are right. And the second thing about whether uh, they are the same A B C D E E F G H I and uh, uh, E F G H or E F G H uh, I J K L I J K L yeah uh, whether the same or different creatures when you see that they actually have their spirit joined together. It changes the whole understanding of that. Uh, and, uh, let, let's look more into these uh, living creatures. These got the whole body, the wheels, the eyes around them. And then verse 17. When the cherubim stood still, the wheels stood still. When one was lifted up, the other lifted itself up. For the spirit of the living creature was in them. When they join, they have one consciousness. That's how perfect their joining is. They are, they are creatures which can merge in one consciousness. Now we have a type of illustration from the inside world. Ants, bees, and insects that live in colonies. Let me ask you this question. Do insects have souls? Uh, you know dogs and animals which are higher form have souls. Very individual. Do insects have souls? Now remember, under the, bi uh, the biological world, uh, there's an actual word study insects. Insects are named other animals. <coughs> the insects are so. Nafesh is the Hebrew word for so. No so. <laughs> okay, we are really stretching your imagination. The Bible did say that animals have nafesh or so. Alright, I got to prove everything from the Bible because we are very, very analytical dimension. All you have to do is look under so or so. In fact, I could look under nafesh. We see that this nafesh. One heat only? Huh? Oh, because of the hyphen. Okay, okay but that's fine. Let me look at the so. There will be the Hebrew word anapes. That's fine. Then when you look under H5, 3, Five. Okay. Animals, as you saw here, are let the waters abound with abundance of living souls, living creatures. It's from the Hebrew affairs. 
I am. Then God created sea creatures, every living soul that moves in verse 21. Uh, after the kind. Then look at verse 24. Let the earth bring forth the living nafesh. According to its kind, cattle, creeping thing, and beasts of the earth. Insects creep, but some fly. And in Ecclesiastes, uh, they talk about how the soul goes forth back to God, kind of thing. Uh, Nafesh is the word soul. They have what I call a shed soul. But it's shed not just with them. As you know, there are three beings of what we call angels in charge of different insects. And they energize them. Uh, and uh, that's why you see a colony of insects performing like they are one person. They are one person. From birth, do you know that ants are fully grown? They're soldier ant, they're soldier ant. They carry on some mastermind that's programming in their DNA. And we also say that dogs have shared souls and all this, but different degree of sharing. We all find it very hard to comprehend because we are humans with the most developed soul in the whole universe. Our souls are made to express the soul of God. Because created world want to know what God is like. Have anyone seen or heard angels laughing? They smile, but I have not heard angels laugh. Question, does God laugh? Yes, yes He does. Who can express God's laughter? Humans. Human. Our soul is worth more than the whole planet, Jesus said. What worth is it if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Even the whole planet is not worth your soul. So we realize that there are degrees of soul in a manner that we have to comprehend. Now let me bring it forth. These living creatures are some of the most complex emerging quote unquote technology ever organically created by Almighty God. They are the expert of experts of merging. Experts of experts of merging. So much so that here's the thing. Remember how I teased you with A B C D E F G H I J K L. I'm going to answer your question. The whole planet of all these creatures, they are all named A. In a direct sense, they all have a shared consciousness. And when they all perform, when you relate to one, you are relating to all. Much better than the three musketeers of girls. They're not like all for one and one for all. That's a human type of unity. But they can share their spirit and their soul. Like you saw how they combine into a way with. So it's almost like they're all named A. Then you might ask, why then do all the four living creatures have different names here? To relate to us. To relate to us. So at any time Jamia Jaka is talking to Ariel, Otto Jaka knows everything that's happening. Because they have a shared thing going on. They are they they have to be. They have to be, do you know? They have to be one. For us we are learning to be one in Christ. For them they were created. To be one. Okay. How dangerous do you think it is to handle 100 million volts of electricity? 
you cannot afford a mistake. A slight miscalculation, wire is not pulled properly, there is no mistake in that. Because they operate at energy levels, their souls and their spirits and their personality have been created to be the experts of magic. And sometimes, depending on how much energy they want to contain, there is of course a multiplication factor. When they want to contain more the energy of God, boom, all of them will merge to a different extent or different levels, depending on the energy. Technically, from our human side, from our human side, because although ants have a shed, so you can isolate one end and that end is different from the other end. <laughs> right? Technically, from our human side, you can relate to different of the four living creatures. That's how I come to understand it because um, when did it take place? I think it's after the transfiguration. Then I went home to Singapore. Hey, one of my downloads I was worshipping. Then I looked and said, Hey, there are these four living creatures hanging around me. I say, Hey, wait a minute. You're hanging around me. Either you're in a time portal and you're also up there. And then you need to hang around all these other four. And my mother is generally trick. I say, Hey, you're going to be merging with this rise. Then I realized, Hey, they are different but yet the same. That means there are a fresh set that hangs around me. Four. And then you got a different one, a different one, from our human point. Remember, from our human point. But technically, among themselves, they're a colony, all we share. Thing. You relate to one, you should relate to all the others. But for our human side, they relate with individualized names. To help us much better and sort of relate to them. That is the second point. It took a long time to get it, but I have to stretch the scriptures from Ezekiel 10 to show they share the living, uh, their life is shared when they merge, and to illustrate from how God uh, took man and divided man into male and female, and before that we were one shared consciousness, uh, to show that for us, once we were divided the male female, getting back into that takes a whole redemption plan of God until we merge back in Christ. For them, easily done. Anytime, they are done. Uh, and, uh, something that uh, we humans were not made with because we were supposed to be super individualistic in our soul development. So that each one of us could express a special aspect of Christ that the other is not. Uh, the eye is different from the finger. And we specialize in different shields. Think about it. We humans are so creative in, in different shields. We all came from the same family. We all came from Noah and his three sons. That's how the whole world was repopulated. Spread across different continents and different countries and then inbreeding among us caused all the differences in our physical outlook but spiritually and in blood we are all the same. When we have to eat, look at how many ways chicken can be cooked. There's African way of cooking, uh, many African ways of cooking. Each one is so different. Western cooking, you know, I think we have ate chicken in hundreds of ways. <laughs> then there's the biggest chicken in China. And uh, then there's a Maori way of cooking in the volcanic soil, way close to the baggage cooking chicken. What has happened to us human? Chicken is a chicken, a chicken at the end of the end, it goes in your stomach, it's still chicken. But it is our ability to create, to discover, to diverse, that's our humanity. Think about the opposite end of the spectrum. Okay. It, technically, minus our Lord Jesus Christ, minus redemption in Christ, who would be the creatures closest to God? 
fallen creatures, correct? The living creatures. Because they're the first step down of God's energy, correct? Technically, who are the creatures furthest from God? Right? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, minus of fallen angels. <laughs> I forgot about fallen angels. Thank you. Thank you for the money. Minus of fallen angels. Human. Human. We are among the last of God's creation. And God did not make man on the first day. He made man on the sixth day. And we are among the last of it. Remember, among the last of the last of the last, the woman. Right. With all due respect, of course. Hey, last can be the best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not downgrading you. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be stoned here. <laughs> I might not get out in the life. And I'm uh, just joking. The, I believe the best is the last, which is the revelation of the bride of Christ. Amen? Amen. Can I have good amen for the men and women? Yeah. But having said that, technically in the Garden of Eden, the women came after the cows, the dogs, all the others came. Correct? There were all these other animals there. But they were waiting to be named by Adam to change their form. So God revealed mankind right at the last. And when we fall, we are the furthest. This planet is right at the edge in the warfare zone. It's because our strength is our weakness, our weakness is our strength. The human race has the ability to diversify. If society exists for another thousand years, and all of you produce your tribes, I can assure you, if there were hundred tribes, there will be a hundred different ways to cook a chicken. In another 50 years, we will find maybe another 50 X times more ways to cook a chicken. Haven't you seen even Kentucky varies in Hong Kong? You have Kentucky Fried Chicken. Here you got, I think you got the Super Crispy or something. And then the original, correct? Your Crispy really looks like a Nuggets kind of thing on that. I never tried that. <laughs> yeah, didn't, didn't, didn't let it try at the moment yet. I tasted your original, it was not so original. <laughs> so, I compared to different countries. And by the way, do you know that McDonald's is quite standard except for the beef which is they, they have from a local country? But Kentucky Fried is different in every country. And uh, in Hong Kong, they have one called the Pizza Flavor Chicken. So you eat chicken with pizza? I wonder what it tastes like. Have you tried it? So they are trying to say, why not have chicken and pizza at the same time? So pizza, chicken. Oh, I don't know why it will look like. Whether they put pizza pieces on it or just pizza flavor. I'm wondering now, which all of you are wondering. Those in Hong Kong, that's it, and let us know. Unless you go back and you know. By now you might have gone, right? Don't know whether people like it. But I'm just illustrating. We are so creative. We will keep on diversifying. Isn't uniqueness uniqueness that we try for? Why is it that we all can buy clothes from all the standard shops and we still choose different clothes and wear different clothes? Because for me, I'm always wearing boring black, right? except today when I was driving on your nice looking summer. I realized that black absorbs heat. And then I was in the black car wearing black. So then for a moment I was wondering, am I having more extra heat or is this a normal summer? Right, I need to find out for some of you. And that's why when I buy cars, I always buy silver, reflect all the light. And anyway, uh, now, so we all got the freedom of choice to shop anything that you want within your range. And yet we all choose different things to wear. Interesting. Because we love our uniqueness. We love our uniqueness. We are the opposite end of the living creatures. They are specialized in the oneness and merging. 
we specialize in our diversity. Our souls are so different. But here's the wonderful thing about God. God has brought the two ends to me. The two ends to me. We will learn everything we can from them. And they love to learn everything from us. Because in the end, all of us were made in the image of God to reveal God. And the knowledge of God is what every being created wants to have. So the second point gives us an understanding of how different the living creatures are. And you appreciate them now as you watch them. Praise the Lord. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We have toiled in our thoughts, in our words, to explain things that could be easily grasped in a nanosecond in heaven when we are there. But yet it is necessary for our soul to comprehend, to understand, to search out the mysteries of God so that we can appreciate all the wonders of creation that you have made for all of us. And every creature that you have made has shown forth a particular attribute of God. We thank you, Father, that it's through the formation of the four living creatures we understand now. Why in this end time, when the prayer of John 17, when the church must become one with one another, that the four living creatures have manifest and they have asked us to be in the four formations of the four living creatures so that a measure of what they have as their attribute is so the oneness that they have will flow into the bride of Christ and we march with the oneness that can only come through the four living creatures we admire the oneness that they have in handling all the life and energies of God. And with one voice they cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Never varying, even from one human age to another, over thousands of years. We need the consistency of oneness, of perfection. Thank you, Father, for creating the four living creatures. Thank you for sending the four living creatures among us to merge with us and to widen our human understanding and consciousness of what they are like. And through oneness with these four living creatures, the church will finally achieve the perfection of oneness that is spoken of and prayed for by our Lord Jesus Christ in John 17, where we are one as you, Father, are one with Jesus, the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. We are made so different, but we can harness all the attributes. We are placed in all your angels, our angels, cherubim, seraphim, and living creatures. Thank you, Father, for this one family of created beings that you have made us to be. We bless you, Father, and we need to say, Holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Father. Let the energizing of the four living creatures energize us until the church and the rapture become so one. And the cherubim, Melchizedek, will come forth, merge with us, and bring the church to the oneness of perfection in praise and worship in the energies of God, without limit, without end. Thank you, Father, for the oneness that these four living creatures bring us into. We give you glory, praise, and honor. We marvel at all that you do. In Jesus' name.